want to sleep in and have the best night ever in the Magic Kingdom? Come on, let's go. Hello, ma'am fam, and welcome to another episode of the best night ever in Walt Disney World. We've done this in Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios, so now it's, of course, Magic Kingdom's turn. I'm gonna be in the park for the final four hours showing you how to take advantage of an evening. Maybe it's your check-in day. Maybe you just don't like getting up early. Maybe it's hot and you wanna go when it's a little bit cooler. Whatever the reason, I'm gonna show you why nighttime in the Disney parks is one of my favorite times to visit. I've stacked a bunch of lightning lanes. We're gonna watch the fireworks. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get to it, because we gotta literally get to the Magic Kingdom. It's over there. Now, perhaps you're a Disney Resort guest and you've never been to this place I'm currently in. This is the Transportation and Ticket Center. This is the gateway to the Magic Kingdom if you are parking in the parking lot. You see the parking lot is about a mile and a half away from the actual park of the Magic Kingdom, which is across Seven Seas Lagoon that way. And you have to either take a monorail or the ferry boat to get all the way over there. I'm a ferry boat kind of gal. I, I know that may be surprising. I love the monorail. It's iconic, it's classic, it's Disney, but the ferry boat offers you such a beautiful view going into the park, especially it's on a nice crisp night tonight. You're gonna have a little breeze going. Plus, the main reason I'm showing you this part of my journey today is because I'm gonna talk about Genie Plus while we're on the boat on the way over. So that way, right when we can get into the park, we can have some fun. But before I go anywhere, my very first stop every time I come to the TTC, there's Joffrey's. Okay. Now we can go to the park. It's been a minute since I've had a shaky Jamaica. I was on a pumpkin crumbrelli cold brew kick for the fall. That cart's out of pumpkin. So I defaulted to my old classic. It's like warm hug. Now a lot of people assume the ferry boat is a lot slower than the monorail, but especially during the busy times, that's not actually true. <laughs> The fastest is actually the bus, which they only operate if it's really, really busy, like Christmas busy. They'll do a bus from here to the front of the Magic Kingdom. That's actually usually the fastest. But the monorail and the ferry boat are very, very close together. And at the end of the night, the ferry boat's actually usually a little bit faster just because of how many people they can fit on one of the ferry boats at a time. When they're running only two ferry boats, it's not quite as fast, but they'll move it up to three when it's a busy time. So it's kind of a toss up. And again, when I'm coming in for a nice leisurely afternoon, as much as I love the monorail, the ferry boat is just really luxuriating. Uh -huh. Also some fun little Disney tidbits here while I wait and before I get into Genie Plus. An interesting thing about Magic Kingdom that a lot of people don't realize is it's actually on the second story. Magic Kingdom is built on top of a building. That's because Walt Disney did not want cast members from Adventureland to walk through Tomorrowland. There's a famous story in Disneyland where a cowboy from Frontierland was walking through Tomorrowland and Walt Disney was like, why are you here? You're throwing off the theme. And he's like, this is how I get from the employee parking lot to my job in Frontierland. And Walt Disney did not want that here in Walt Disney World. So they had in mind a series of underground tunnels underneath the park so that cast members could get wherever they needed to go and pop up magically without interfering with the show for the guests. Unfortunately, however, we're in a swamp right now. And what happens when you try to dig a tunnel in a swamp? It fills with water. So they came to plan B. They built a one-story building right over there. They dug a big hole in front of it, covered the building with dirt, and built the Magic Kingdom on top of the building. Which means that big hole, you're looking at it. It became Seven Seas Lagoon. This is a man-made body of water. And again, that also means that everything in the Magic Kingdom, including the castle and most of the trees, are on the roof of another building. That blows my mind, by the way. When I first learned that and I thought about things like the moat, the castle, the Liberty Tree in Liberty Square, that, that's basically just in a big giant planter. Like think of the lawn outside of the castle. That's not, that's a planter basically on a roof. What? Also, let's go ahead and talk about Genie Plus while we're waiting for the ferry boat to get here. Again, we're gonna have fun as soon as we get in there and make the most of our few hours in the park. I'm sure that you know that Genie Plus is Disney's skip the line service. It's a paid per person service that allows you to skip the line at over 40 attractions across Walt Disney World. It is priced per day per park, so it's more expensive to go to the Magic Kingdom at Christmas than it is Animal Kingdom on a random Wednesday. For reference today, I paid $27 for Genie Plus. As far as booking Genie Plus go, anyone, regardless of what kind of ticket they have, where they're staying, they can book their first Genie Plus attraction starting at 7 a.m. So that's exactly what I did this morning. At 7 a.m., I opened up one tiny bit of an eye and I booked the Jungle Cruise. Now, an important key feature to Genie Plus and the secret to success for coming at a later time into the parks that are busy like Magic Kingdom or Disney's Hollywood Studios is stacking, which is taking advantage of one of the rules of Genie Plus, the 120 minute rule. Basically, you can book another Genie Plus either A, after you've used the first one, B, if it expires for some reason, or th 
three, I almost said three, even though it's C, or three C, <laughs> after it's been 120 minutes since you booked the first one. Whichever of those things comes first. Which means if you're not planning on coming into the park until later, you can stack and book different lightning lanes every two hours. So that way, by the time you get into the park, you've got a bunch of lightning lanes ready to go. There is one important rule that you need to know about stacking, and that's that the 120 minute rule doesn't kick in until that park officially opens. So Magic Kingdom opened at 9 a.m. today, which meant I could book one at seven, park opened at nine, and then I could book another one at 11. And then I could book another one at one, three, and then five. Now, you can remember what time you can book your next one because there's a little bar at the top of your tip board and it'll say next one available to book at and it'll give you a time. As a pro tip, I always recommend setting an alarm for a minute or two before that time so you're always ready to go to book your next one. But because of stacking every two hours, I'm walking into the park with five Genie Plus Lightning Lanes. I'm also walking into the park with one Fancy Ride Lightning Lane. Fancy rides are what I call individual lightning lanes because that is a funnier and better name and it's what I came up with when the system first debuted and it's just stuck. So if you've been here for fancy rides, thank you. Happy to have you. Fancy rides are the rides that are so fancy that are so special that they're not included on Genie Plus and if you want to skip the line there, you have to pay an individual cost per attraction. In this park, they are Tron Light Cycle Run and Seven Doors Mine Train. As far as booking fancy rides goes, Disney World Resort guests are eligible to start booking them at 7 a.m. Everybody else is eligible at the time that park opens. You can only book two fancy rides per day. Doesn't matter how many parks you're going to, it's a max of two. I decided earlier this afternoon that I wanted to ride Tron at night during this best night ever in the Magic Kingdom. And I looked in the afternoon and there happened to still be some for later in the evening. So I went ahead and paid for it. If you are dead set on riding Tron though, I recommend buying that fancy ride as soon as you're able to either 7 a.m. or park open depending on where you're staying. This is so much talking, but the ferry boat, I can see it right now and I just feel like I have to fill with all the information in my brain right now so that everyone knows what to do. But you don't have to buy a fancy ride to ride in Tron, but the only other way to get on Tron is a virtual queue. You can join at 7 a.m. as long as you have a Magic Kingdom park reservation or 1 p.m. as long as you're in the park. My issue with the virtual queue is that while it's free, which is arguably better than paying $20 to ride the ride, you don't have any control over when you're called back. So as someone who wanted to come into the park later in the evening, I didn't want to join the virtual queue at seven and then get called back at 10 a.m. when I didn't plan on being here. So anyway, between booking Genie Pluses all day and buying Tron Fancy Ride, I'm again walking into the park with six different tractions ready to go. We'll get into modifying and some other Genie Plus advice as we go throughout the evening tonight, but for now, the ferry boat's almost here. Let's get to the park. Avast, we're off to the Magic Kingdom. We made it inside the park. It took about 15-ish minutes to get over and in here. And I did have the worst timing possible. Like literally as I walked up with my shaky Jamaica, the ferry boat was pulling away. Worth it. But it was just luxuriating. And that is the name of the game today. The TTC itself was luxuriating. There wasn't anybody there. There's barely anyone lined to tap in the park. I love rope dropping from an efficiency standpoint and getting the most out of your day. But as far as a luxuriating, relaxing, enjoying yourself and not feeling stressed, I love coming into the park in the late afternoon, early evening. And boy, do I love walking into a holiday Magic Kingdom. Our very merry Christmas party video just came out if you haven't seen that yet, if you're coming to the party or want some holiday merriment. And we are headed to our first land of the evening, Adventureland, one of my faves. And speaking of faves, we are headed to ride my favorite attraction in all of Walt Disney World, Pirates of the Caribbean. This was the fourth lightning lane I booked today. So I guess that would be the three o'clock slot. And when I booked it, much like all of these lightning lanes, it was a lot earlier than I wanted it to be. But don't let that scare you away from booking it. Book the ride, kick off the next 120 minutes because of the modify feature, which is my best friend on the app. Basically the modify feature allows you to modify any existing Genie Plus Lightning Lane. Not fancy ride, Genie Plus only. 
you can modify for another attraction in that park only or another time of the attraction that you've already booked, obviously subject to availability. So for example, when I was booking these attractions, they were hours and hours earlier than I knew I'd be in the park. But I went ahead and locked them in, kicked off that next 120 minutes, and then throughout the day I would go modify them and click whatever the next time was until eventually they were at the times I wanted them to be. It takes a little bit of work and finagling, but you can really set yourself up a nice day where you've got all the attractions you want, you've got the ones that are close together, closer times together. And because Genie Plus is a next available system, meaning you don't get to pick which time you're booking, it's whatever's next available, this is the best way I have found to use and finagle the system to stack a very beautiful stack of lightning lanes going into the park. Pirates of the Caribbean, I talk about it all the time, but again, it's my favorite ride in the park. To me, it's a perfect attraction. It's a classic. It's got that wonderful original music written by Exitensio. You've got a little bit of thrill with all the pirates and the spookiness, but it's also a classic family boat ride. I just love it so much. I haven't been on it in a long time. When we went to Tokyo, it was under refurbishment there, and I just haven't been to the Magic Kingdom riding rides for a video recently. So I'm very excited, which is probably lame because I've rented a hundred million times. But you know, whenever you get to ride your favorite ride and it's been a little bit, it's exciting. attraction it's just that's it for me that's it it would be the best night ever if that's all we did and saw happily ever after we could chalk this up to a win but we're gonna keep going of course and we're gonna hit another of my favorite attractions in the park right next door we're going to big thunder mountain railroad one of the only good things that i can think of for this time of year daylight savings time when it gets dark so early i guess this is not daylight savings time right Daylight savings times when we get the extra hour. Anyway, only good things for getting dark this early is that you get more nighttime in the parks, which means it's cooler. It's very just magical. It feels like a different kind of magic at night in the parks. And there are certain attractions that I think are better at night or just different at night. And Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is one of them. It's amazing during the day, but at night it's just extra fun, especially when you get to see the castle all lit up and it just adds an extra level of thrill, I think. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad has a 44 zero inch height requirement. It's definitely not the most intense coaster in the park. I would give that to Tron Light Cycle Run, previously Space Mountain, but it is just so fun. It's another really nostalgic one for me and I know a lot of other people. I love riding in the back where you get whipped around a little bit more. It's a lovely attraction. It's the wildest ride in the wilderness. Oh, only has a 30 minute wait. We have a lightning lane, but 30 minutes is not too bad because it's usually very, very long, especially with Splash Mountain being closed next door and turned into Tiana's Bayou Adventure sometime in 2024. It can get very, very long, so it's a very good one to Lightning Lane. This is what I mean about kind of being able to finagle your evening if you stack like this. Even though I booked things in different orders, I was able to book Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and Pirates of the Caribbean with times back to back since they're right next door to each other. And you'll see the next attraction we're gonna do is also not too far. Cause that's one thing I know a lot in our genie videos and stuff, people are like, you're zigzagging across the park. That'd be impossible. And I agree when you are, hmm. A lot of people just jumped the line right here. Well, took one video back being in the United States for me to have to do a don't be a jerk in the park PSA. Don't jump the line. It's gonna be awkward when they wanna tap for your lighting line up here and you don't have one, isn't it?
attraction really does hit different. I love that ride so much. At night, it's so much fun. You get to see the saloon party going on when you go through the town and it just like, what a joy. What a joy it is. Whew. Okay, and before I got painfully distracted by the people jumping the line, um, I was talking about how by being able to finagle and stack your lightning lanes like this, you're able to plan a little bit better about grouping attractions that are nearby. So I went from Pirates over to Big Thunder, now we're gonna go down to Liberty Square, but I'm kind of staying all right here in this part of the park before fireworks, and then I can do the other lanes after fireworks, which, again, in like a lot of our Genie videos and stuff, people talk about how it's a lot harder for more than one person to get around the park easily, especially if you've got like wheelchairs or strollers, which I totally get. So this is a little bit more realistic for a bigger group. Oh, aren't these parks just so beautiful at night? Like I love being in the parks at night. I just think they look, again, just like a special glow. Now we are gonna head into Liberty Square. I'm sure you know what we're riding. And whilst I'm walking along the little walkway here, which is one of my favorite places in Magic Kingdom. It's just peaceful and beautiful by the rivers of America. But I'm gonna go ahead and place a mobile order for a little treat to have after Haunted Mansion before the fireworks, because who doesn't want a little fireworks treat? And you know, I think not enough people know that you can mobile order from the Main Street Confectionery. So the classic candy and treat shop on the end of Main Street where you can get cookies and Mickey shaped Rice Krispie treats and caramel apples and cake pops and all kinds of just classic Disney bakery case treats. You can actually mobile order them, which is a great tip, especially for something like fireworks when a lot of people are trying to get treats from the different ice cream carts or the popcorn carts or the ice cream parlor. So I haven't had a classic Disney bakery case treat in a minute. So I figured that would be my special snack tonight. And yes, even the seasonal things are on there. But you know, I'm a gal who loves the classics. So I think I'm gonna go with my favorite caramel apple, which is just the Granny Smith apple with the chopped peanuts on it. It's a classic, it's an icon. And I'm gonna snag that. And don't forget, if you've got any kind of discount, like an annual pass or DVC link to your account, it'll apply at the confectionery. And look at that, we made it into Liberty Square. We ordered our treat along the way. This is something, if you're gonna mobile order, I recommend doing a little bit early if you're trying to get it for fireworks, just because it is a popular time to try and get down Main Street and get yourself a little snack. But now I can pick that up and then be right on Main Street for the fireworks in a minute. Of course, the Liberty Square attraction we're doing is the Haunted Mansion, another classic. It's like the, the highlight reel of Magic Kingdom tonight. Haunted Mansion, opening day ride, probably, I say this all the time, but it is probably the most beloved attraction universally around the world. People adore Haunted Mansion and for good reason. It's again a family ride like Pirates, but it's obviously thrilling. It's a little spooky scary. It's got a lot of classic Imagineering, a lot of amazing special effects. It's an absolute must do when you come to Magic Kingdom. I would say if you're gonna ride two rides at the Magic Kingdom, it needs to be this one in Pirates. That said, it's not the hardest lightning lane to get. I booked it second today after Jingle Cruise, which is the Christmas Jungle Cruise. It can fill up, but it's not quite as fast as some other ones like Peter Pan's Flight or Jungle Cruise. Mansion, always a delight. Now, I don't want to disparage that attraction because it's iconic, but I kind of forgot that they turned the brightness up in the stretch room. I wish they hadn't. <laughs> I understand it was really dark, but it's now way too light, in my opinion. It takes away the spookiness. Like, you, it's, it's too much. There's got to be a happy middle if they thought it was too dark, but... You know, that's just my thought. It's still an amazing attraction, obviously. The lightning lane was a little backed up, so it took me a little longer than I thought it might to get through that attraction. I'm still headed to Main Street to watch fireworks. I just may have to modify my mobile order to pick my treat up afterwards, which is a-okay. Because part of having the best time at Disney World is being flexible and not letting the little things get you down. It's wild how unbusy the rest of the park is compared to what I'm sure Main Street and the Castle Hub look like right now. So if you have multiple nights in the park or you've already seen the fireworks or you don't care about fireworks, this is a great time to enjoy the rest of the park and ride some rides with lower weights. 
Here are the wait times on a moderately busy day, 20-ish minutes before fireworks. Big Thunder Mountain, 25 minutes. Buzz, 35. Mansion, 50. Jingle Cruise, 40. Peter Pan's Flight, 60. That's not very long for that ride. 25 at Pirates, 65 at Mine Train. Not very long for that either. Again, if you don't care about the fireworks, or you've already seen them, nighttime is a great time to ride things. And I'm hoping that after fireworks is too. Now, obviously, the earlier you get a spot for fireworks, generally speaking, the better your view is going to be. And if you've never seen the show, I recommend getting a spot maybe like 30 minutes beforehand. My perfect spot, if you've not seen it, is the back half of the castle hub. So where the circle is up by the castle, the end of that. If you stand closer to the castle than Walt and Mickey, you're gonna see the projections really well, but none of the fireworks because they're like behind the castle. If you wanna see the projections down Main Street, I recommend being kind of at the top of Main Street a little bit. So near the ice cream parlor-ish, so you can see the sides of Main Street, but also get a great view of the castle. But honestly, any spot down Main Street is awesome with the newly added projections all the way down the street. You get a more immersive experience. But if it's your first time, again, I recommend being a little bit closer because it's a lot to try and take in. Projections on the castle, projections on Main Street, and fireworks behind the castle. So that's a good first step. My low key favorite alternate spot, not on Main Street, is in Fantasyland, because it's absolutely beautiful. You get the best views of the fireworks. It's a lot less crowded back there. You just don't get the projections or the best view of Tinkerbell, but it's awesome. I recommend doing that at least once. Picked up my delicious confectionery treat, and I've still got like 15 minutes till fireworks, so I'm gonna move a little bit further down Main Street. In my experience, it's not as tightly packed also, which is another pro to watching on Main Street. And if you've separated from your party, it's a little bit easier to find them again. If you've separated from your party and you're in the castle hub and it's like 15 minutes to fireworks, you're probably not getting to them. It's just gonna be real tricky. So keep that in mind if you wanna separate, like go to the bathroom or get drinks or something. Snagged a pretty great spot. I was trying to stand not directly in front of someone who's been standing here before because I don't wanna block their view. Also as a general courtesy reminder, if you can take off your ears or if you have like a big hat on, that's always nice to take off before the fireworks begin. Oh man, Jordan Fisher, every time. It's the tears flowing. Actually, you know what makes me cry the hardest every time? Is Tinkerbell. And it's not necessarily because Tinkerbell's flying, it's the crowd's reaction to Tinkerbell's flying. Because everyone, when they realize it, it's like the amazement and the awe is, oh, tears. Now, I'm clearly swimming upstream towards the castle. Couple things, if you're headed anywhere after fireworks, it's gonna be, look like this. It's gonna be a cluster if you're on Main Street or you're in the hub. Pack those patient pants, friends, and go where the cast members tell you to. They're gonna have people leaving going one way, people staying going another way. They're gonna have things marked off. Just do what they tell you to. They have figured it out. They're trying to get everybody out of here, and they've, they've got this operation down to a science. You just need to have your patient pants. Now, as much of a nightmare as this is, my best advice is to stay in the park right now, because as many of people are moving the same way I am, Probably three times as many are trying to leave, and that's how many people are going to be at the transportation no, lines for buses, ferry boats, and monorails. So you're going to wait a very long time if you leave right now to get on your transportation. So I know if you've got little ones that are sleeping or they're tired, it's been a long day, it's hard to keep staying in the park later, but the later you stay in the park, the shorter the lines of transportation are going to be. And if you're going to go wait in a 30-minute line for the monorail, wouldn't you rather spend 30 minutes in the park? All right, we made it through the main congestion. We're rocking and rolling now. We're headed to Tomorrowland, but I came this way because this pathway looked less crowded than the other Tomorrowland bridge. Easier to get to as well. But again, just pack those patient pants, friends. It's not surprising when 10,000 people are standing on Main Street that they all have to get somewhere when the fireworks are over. 
I will say, the previous two times I've seen the fireworks before tonight, I've been in Fantasyland. And if you have somebody in your group that does not do well in large crowds, that's another reason to watch it somewhere alternative like there, because you don't deal with this so much. It's much more spread out. It's not congested trying to get out. So if you've got somebody that's like, not gonna do well in these crowds, that is my recommended place to go. All right, well, we finally made it into Tomorrowland and towards Tron Light Cycle Run. Again, this is the fancy ride I purchased earlier today and I made sure to book it at night after the fireworks because this ride is much cooler at night in my opinion because of that little thing called the grid. Tron Light Cycle Run is the newest ride in Walt Disney World. It has a 48 inch height requirement and like I said earlier, the only two ways to ride this attraction are with a fancy ride or a virtual queue. And keep in mind with the virtual queue, not only do you not get to control what time you will ride the attraction, it'll call you back and you have an hour to come back. And they are very strict if you're late, so keep that in mind. But having a spot in the virtual queue doesn't mean expedited line. I have waited about an hour every time I've done the virtual queue, so just keep that in mind. The other thing you gotta know about Tron is it has a very unique ride vehicle. It's somewhat similar to the motorcycles at Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, but you have to lean forward. So it's a very unique ride vehicle. So if you're at all unsure, highly recommend trying out the test seat before you get in the virtual queue, just because it would be terrible to wait that long and then not be able to ride. Now no, Tron is the only Disney attraction that's got mid-queue lockers that you need to put all of your things in. There is a small compartment in the front of the vehicle if you want to keep your phone, but you can't hold it on the ride or anything. So hats, sunglasses, bags, they're all going to go in a locker. Make sure you keep your magic band or your ticket or whatever you use to tap into the locker because that's how you're going to get your stuff out. And uh, which means I'll see you in a minute. Let's go murder some pixels. is really quite fun. It's much better at night in my opinion. So if you have the chance to choose what time you're gonna ride, I highly recommend doing it at night. That takeoff is so fun and I've said it before, but my favorite effect is when they are driving you past a mirror and they light up the wheels on your car to be orange. So it looks like you're driving next to the orange team. Very cool effect, it's on the left. I just want it to be 15 to 30 seconds longer. I think 15 to 30 seconds more, it's a really short coaster, would be perfection. You know what is perfection though? These restrooms right here. They're very, very quiet usually and clean and they're just tucked away. So if you're coming to Tron, consider this as your restroom stop. All right, there's just about an hour left of park time. I've got two more lightning lanes booked, both in Fantasyland. I could technically book another one if I wanted to because it's been enough time since I booked the last one. I just don't know if I'll have time to use another one. Also, pretty much everything that's available right now is a walk-on or close to a walk-on anyway. Things like Under the Sea Journey, The Little Mermaid, It's a Small World, Dumbo, those are all walk-ons right now and that's basically what's left. I, however, have got Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh and Peter Pan's Flight booked. So let's go do those. First up, the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which I booked in the five o'clock slot because I knew I wanted to end in Fantasyland and I think this attraction is so cute. And of the attractions in Fantasyland that aren't the obvious heavy hitters like Peter Pan's Flight or Mine Train, this one is usually one of the ones that has a little bit longer of a line. It's got a 25 minute wait right now, which is obviously not that long, but still, when we've only got an hour left, 25 minutes is 25 minutes. The Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh is a very cute Winnie the Pooh themed dark ride where you're going to board a honey pot and go through the story of Winnie the Pooh with all of your 100 Acre Wood friends. Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, Piglet, Christopher Robin, Gopher, Kangaroo, Rabbit, Owl, and the cutest part is absolutely when your honey pot bounces with Tigger. <laughs> if you ask me, he'll never reach that dream. Why me? Why me? The Winnie the 
Deku characters just warm my heart. I think they're so cute. I've loved them ever since I was little. Oh my gosh, how amazing is Fantasyland at night? Like, everywhere in this park is magical at night, but there's something so special about Fantasyland at night with the lights of the carousel and the castle and just, it feels enchanted and wonderful. Now, Peter Pan's flight is technically, I guess, the first lightning lane I booked today at 7 a.m., except for at the time I booked Jingle Cruise. And then later in the day I realized I didn't actually want to do Jingle Cruise because tomorrow is the first Very Merry Christmas party and I'm saving all my Christmas fun for then. I also knew I wanted to end the night in Fantasyland just because it feels nostalgic for me. I remember coming as a kid and as a teenager and us always ending in Fantasyland back when extended hours were for all of the hotels and they'd be till like three in the morning. My mom and I would often be out here in Fantasyland because if you don't have little ones, it's a great time to come to Fantasyland. Besides your two really big heavy hitters, Peter Pan's Flight and Seven Doors Mine Train, both of which still have over an hour long line with 30 minutes of park time left, pretty much everything is like 20 minutes or less. Hello. There we go. Thank you. So if you're an adult or you've got older kids or teenagers and you want to do some of the Fantasyland rides, last hour of the park is a good time to do that because right now you could knock out Under the Sea Journey, The Little Mermaid, It's a Small World, Winnie the Pooh, Dumbo, The Carousel, Barnstormer, all really, really quickly without a ton of waiting or worrying about Genie Plus. Peter Pan's flight, such a nostalgic attraction. I just feel like a little kid on that one. Glad to ride it, glad not to wait in a 60 minute queue, which is what it's still posted at at the end of the night. And now I've got time to do one more attraction, I think. And at this point of the night, I would tell you to either jump in line for a favorite that you haven't gotten to ride yet today. Let's take a look at the wait times actually. With about 10 minutes left of park time, let's see, Ash Orbiter 20 minutes, Big Thunder 25, Buzz 35, Dumbo 5, Mansion 25, Small World 20, Jingle Cruise 30, Winnie the Pooh 20, all the characters are done. Peter Pan's still 60, Pirates 20, Mine Train 80, Space 40, and everything else is less than 10. So at this point, I would say 10 minutes left to close. You can either try and knock out one, maybe two, if timing is really on your side. Small attractions, like two of the small Fantasyland ones, or you could go get in line for a heavy hitter like Space Mountain, Peter Pan's Flight, or Seven Dwarves Mine Train that you haven't gotten to ride today. Remember, as long as you're in the queue by the time the park closes, so 9.59, you get to ride, which I don't know if Seven Dwarves Mine Train will truly have an 80 minute wait at this point, but even if it does, you're spending that 80 minutes after the park's already closed, so you're not wasting that valuable park time waiting 80 minutes in that queue. Oh my gosh, this is so magical. Cinderella's out here. Oh my gosh, how magical. Hi Cinderella. Look <laughs> lovely. Thank you, so do you. <laughs> oh my gosh, how magical was that? Oh my gosh, wait, all the princesses are riding the carousel. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry, this is so magical. There's Jasmine, you can see Marinus hair up there, and Ariel's right here. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad I didn't go to Mine Train. <laughs> Aurora's behind Ariel too. Oh my gosh, this is so magical. I don't think I'm gonna make it onto this one, but how sweet is this? It's actually on my Disney bucket list to ride a ride with a character. I've never had it happen, but this is so sweet. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I'm sure there's nowhere near a princess now, but I'm gonna make it. I know I'm being really dramatic right now, but it has literally been on my Disney bucket list for like 12 or 15 years to ride a ride with a character. And it's just one of those magical moments that you have no control over. It just happens. And like, it was just so magical. Not 
like, I mean, it was for me, but also just like, I mean, every kid and adult on that carousel was like so believing in magic and like, what a cool way to end the night. And I'm unwell now, so I need to get it together a little bit. But I did not expect that to happen. I almost went to mind train and I'm really glad I did it. Also, I hope it goes without saying that something like that is not a guarantee. Please don't come ride the carousel last thing at night and then if they don't come out, be mad at me or the princesses or any other cast members. There are just magical moments sometimes. So what a joy. What an amazing way to end the night. Oh, now the princesses are all out in fantasy land, just like meeting and greeting and holding little kids' hands. And it's, ugh, Meredith's trying to pull the sword out. It's not working. Oh my gosh, what, what is happening? Well, I was prepared to tell you that the best thing about being in the park at night is the castle at night, but obviously tonight it was the carousel experience. I'm gonna cherish that for a long time. And I'd be so dramatic right now. Anyway, <laughs> I don't even, I'm like without words, which does not happen very often in this park because I'm very lucky to have experienced pretty much everything this park has to experience. So that was really, really magical. And I hope whenever you come, you have a moment that makes you feel like this, even if you don't dramatically cry. <laughs> but hopefully this video was helpful in showing you how to have an amazing evening here in the Magic Kingdom. Obviously coming in the evening means you don't get to meet some of the characters, you miss out on things like the parade and some of the other entertainment offerings. You can't pack everything into just a few hours in the evening. But again, if you are on your check-in day, or if you're just somebody that likes to sleep in or wants to park hop here from another park, or maybe you wanna have a luxurious pool day beforehand, you can get a lot done in the evening. In just about four hours, we did seven attractions in the park, including some of the most popular ones like Tron Light Cycle Run, Haunted Mansion, and Peter Pan's Flight, saw Happily Ever After, and enjoyed one of my favorite snacks on Main Street USA. So you can get a lot done, especially using that stacking method. You can get those ready all day long and then just come in and have a luxurious, much more relaxing evening than if you're trying to fiddle faddle and, and find lightning lanes all day. So whatever way you choose to do Walt Disney World, whether it's rope drop, whether it's mornings, whether it's all day, whether it's just evenings you can have an amazing time but I hope this was helpful for those who want to come in a little bit later what other kinds of videos do you want to see we have done this in all four Disney World parks at this point do you want to see this at Universal with Express without Express definitely let me know that down in the comments and in the meantime friends make sure to rate review subscribe follow us on social media please come hang out with us in discord and until next time friends I'm Molly and it has been so 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 unbelievably magical tonight